Hi, my name is Mae Bogren and I'm a board certified behavior analyst with Brett Zenovi and Associates. In this video, I'll be talking about the comprehensive application of behavior analysis to schooling, or CABIS. This is a research-driven system-wide approach providing individualized programs for children and young people with and without disabilities. It was developed by Greer and colleagues at Teachers College of Columbia University. The more specifically, we're going to be talking about the decision tree protocol for measurement and accuracy of instruction. So CABIS is a learner-driven system-wide or school-wide approach to educational-based comprehensive application of the science of behavior analysis to all roles of schooling. So teachers, parents, psychologists, speech therapists, social workers, supervisors, administrators, university trainings, and etc. So what is the decision protocol? The decision protocol, as described by Kion and Greer is used to analyze the graph and make empirically driven instructional decisions and gauge the effectiveness of teaching. The decision protocol criteria is counted as 90% over two consecutive sessions. When a short-term objective is mastered, the learner moves to the next step towards the long-term objective. A data path is aligned between two consecutive data points. If the trend of three data paths occur are ascending, the decision is made to continue with that short-term objective. If the trend of three data paths are descending or there's no trend, then the decision would be to make a change to the mode of instruction. If after five data paths, the overall trend is ascending, then again, the decision is made to continue with that level of instruction. If after five data paths, the overall trend is descending or there's no trend, the decision is made to change the instruction. So next, let's talk about what those decisions are. How do we change that instruction? We're either going to implement an antecedent strategy, which is going to be prior to the instruction, or a consequence-based strategy, which could be provided after the instruction. Some antecedent-based strategies would be to modify your teaching procedure, to use a high probability to low probability sequence, to conduct a preference assessment, to change the field size and or the instruction environment, to teach prerequisite skills, or and or embed a stimulus prompt. Some consequence-based some consequence -based strategies might be to provide better quality or quantity of reinforcement, to alter the schedule of reinforcement, or to use a response prompt. Let's talk more about the layout of the graph. The data point will be placed at exact coordinate between the vertical and the horizontal axis on the graph. The data path is the center of each data point in a given data set to the center of the next data point in the same set. During the decision-making protocol, we're counting data paths, not data points, um, because these are going to be the fundamental properties of the behavior change that we're looking for. So decision opportunities, just to recap, after three data paths is the earliest opportunity to make a decision. Data paths begin with the first data point. So basically, four data points will equal three data paths. You're going to insert a condition line after any uh, new decision opportunity is made. So let's summarize. Uh, for an ascending trend, you're going to continue with the treatment. For a descending trend, you're going to draw a condition line and change tactics. For a valuable trend, you're going to continue for five data paths and then check back again. As soon as criteria is reached, you're going to draw a condition line and move to the next phase. Without a tool such as this one to guide treatment, an ineffective intervention may continue for too long or an effective treatment may be discontinued prematurely. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and to disseminate the science, share this video.